till I met you And I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my doom Till I met
There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. That is such a great reminder that God is for me, not against me, that I am who he says that I am, that who the sun sets free is free indeed. That's one of the main things that we believe here at Mission is that we have hope because of Jesus. And one of the ways that we get to celebrate that is through baptism. And we're going to be doing that at our in-person gatherings today, celebrating people who are making the decision to surrender their lives to Jesus. That's ultimately what baptism means. It doesn't mean that we've got our stuff together or our act together, things figured out, it actually means that we're choosing to surrender. Like the way that we think, the way that we live, the way that we feel, we're surrendering that to Jesus's leadership in our life. And so if you're interested in taking that step, uh, you can still do that at our 6 p.m. service. We'll drop a link in the chat. Uh, you can click on that, register for it, and we'll send you all the information that you need to know for the baptism that's happening uh, tonight. But every time that we get to celebrate baptism, it is like such a great reminder of why we exist as a church, which is to help people find and follow Jesus. In fact, if you're new around mission, whether this is your first time here or you've just been engaging online the last couple of weeks and haven't done this yet, we want to invite you to click the new here link. Uh, we'd love to send you a free gift just to say thanks for being here and checking out Mission. It's a Mission Church coffee mug. There's no strings attached, so make sure you do that. In addition to filling out that new here link, if you are new, download the app. It's the best way to stay connected and informed. You can watch or listen to past messages. You can even fill out a prayer request anytime during the week. Our team gathers every week and we, we pray for all the requests that come in. So it's the best way to not only stay connected and informed, but be able to reach out and start a conversation uh, with anything throughout the week. So make sure you download the app. One of the traditions around here uh, is around Super Bowl Sunday. We usually move our 6 p.m. Sunday night service to Saturday night, and we're going to do that again this year. So just want to give you a heads up. If you come to the in-person gatherings at 6 p.m. next Sunday night, it's Super Bowl Sunday. We won't be gathering then. We'll be gathering on Saturday night instead. So make sure that you have that on your calendar. Uh, and next weekend, we're kicking off a new series called Better For It. It is gonna be an incredible series throughout the entire month of February, where we're gonna be stopping and kind of pausing and asking ourselves the question of how can we be better for it? With everything we've gone through and kind of where we're headed this year, like what are some practical ways that, that we can be better for it? And in fact, one of the things we're doing is launching workshops every Monday night after the teaching on Sunday to put some real practical tools in all of our hands so that we can become better together. And so if you're interested in doing that, we're gonna put a link uh, right there in the chat. You can sign up in the app as well, uh, but don't miss a week of the series and then don't miss a week of the workshops 
better for it during the month of February. Well, we're going to receive an offering right now. This is something we do every week at Michigan. We kind of link arms together and live sacrificially, financially, being generous. Uh, we get to do real practical good in our community through the generosity of people like you. We get to come alongside families and individuals in need. In fact, this week, we were able to help a couple of families, one with some car repairs, another one with uh, some rent because of income they had lost due to unemployment. So just every week, we're able to come alongside families and individuals and meet real practical needs because of your generosity. So thanks for participating in that. You can give online through the app. Uh, you can text to give. Lots of ways that you can participate in generosity around here. But today, Mike Kickerson is going to be teaching. We're wrapping up a series called Fresh Ink. If you missed any of this, you can always watch online, catch up on the app, YouTube, Facebook, lots of ways that you can go back and kind of catch up as we wrap up this series today. So glad that you're here. Welcome to Mission. Well, what is up, Mission Church? Man, my name is Mike Hickerson. I'm honored uh, to be the lead pastor of Mission. I love everything that God is doing in and through the people that make up Mission. Uh, mission exists to help people find and follow Jesus. That is what we're all about. In fact, everything that we do is geared to that end. Um, you're, what you're sitting around or maybe who you're in the chat with, or may, you probably know this about if you're sitting with anyone in your family watching and engaging online, you know that there are no perfect people in this world. And so at Mission, we just aren't trying to hide the fact that none of us are perfect. We're just leading with the fact none of us are perfect. And so if we're not perfect, then how do we get rescued by a really good God? And that's why we think there's hope for every single one of us. And so that's what we cling to because man, what we found around here at Mission is that God is who he says he is and will do everything that he's promised to do, that he sent his son Jesus into the mess for messes like us. And, and that fact, it's not because we're awesome, but because he's awesome and is restoring the relationship that our, rebellion, or that our rebellion broke with him. And that means there is hope for every single stinking one of us. And that's great news. That's what we cling to. That's what we're clinging to for our life, for eternity, for our souls, for our relationships, for our future. And it's not just that we get like, you know, the get into heaven free card. It's that we get to be transformed on this side of eternity into the best versions of ourselves. So there's hope for that as well. And man, it's been the privilege of my life to be a part of uh, being transformed, uh, how God is using mission and how he's been so good and kind to us and how he sent Jesus into the mess. But also hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our friends around Ventura County have been transformed by the, the radical grace um, that God extended through Jesus and the radical privilege that we have to be reconciled and bought back and established as much loved sons and daughters. And so, man, if you're just checking mission out, you're like, I don't know if I'm in all that. I get that. There's a true that we call uh, on Sundays for sure, whenever you're engaging with this, to say, man, I know that not everybody's on the same page with who God is or who Jesus is or same page about the Bible. But what we say is like, okay, let's maybe call a truce and go, if that's true, if it's remotely possible that it could be true, that God is who he says he is and he sent his son Jesus and his desire is that he's not mad at us, but he wants relationship and restoration with us. And he wants to be able to empower us to be transformed. If that's true, Man, that is the best news ever, and it has life-changing ramifications. And so that's what we celebrate together, and that's what we go after together, and what we think together. In fact, we've been starting this year, 2021. Let's just go, man. Let's get some fresh ink. Like, I, I don't know if you know this, but I don't have any tats. I'm working on it. I got a guy. I'm working on trying to figure out what I want on my body that long. I'm not anti-tattoo. I just don't know what I want on my body that long. So I'm trying to figure that out. But what we're trying to talk about this, um, in this series is like, what fresh ink do we need to go back to in God's word? that would help us um, in this year as we go, man, what do we want to be about this year? What do we want to be different this year? What trajectory do we want to set the course of our life on this year? I mean, if we just keep doing the same old thing, we're going to end up in the same old places, and we don't want to end up that way. We want to be the best versions of ourselves in 2021 because 2020 was a decade of a year. And so we want to go after a new trajectory this year. And so we've done stuff like we've talked about, um, like we want to get a Micah 6, 8 in our hearts and minds, where we act justly, where we love mercy, and where we walk humbly with our God. Man, it, the definition of our life, what we want to be about at the end of the time, when we, we like run our race of life, and we're going to make, we want God to be able to say, you know what? He acted justly. She acted justly. She loved mercy, and they walked humbly with me. Man, that's a great life, a life well lived. And then week two, we talk about, man, try not to overcomplicate what Jesus called to love God and love people. 
The hardest part of that is, I think, loving people, but we'll talk a little bit about that. That's what we've been after. If we could just do these two things, if we could act justly and love mercy and walk humbly and we could love God and love people, our 2021 would be amazingly different individually. It would be amazingly different in our families. It would be amazingly different in our teams, our workplaces. Our, I think our cities would be different. Our county would be different. Our state would be different. Our, if just people that are following Jesus would act justly, love mercy, walk humbly, and love God and love people, I, I think if we got that fresh ink Back in our hearts and minds and souls, we would, our world would look different. In week three, we walk through just being salt and light in our world. Like we are called to have an impact in our world and not just hide out in it. And last week, Jen walked through amazing message. If you haven't watched it, go watch it on, on the app. Stop what you're doing right now. You can go watch it now. No, I'm just kidding. But it was an amazing message about remaining in the vine, that, that Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. Like, remain in me is what Jesus said. And so she even said, I love this quote, we want to keep the remain thing, like this year, the fresh ink, the old thing that we need to know, that we need to be reminded of. We need to keep the remain thing, the main thing, mean remaining with Jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith. Let's keep that remain thing, the vine, the one that gives us sustenance, the one that provides us. We want to keep the remaining in him, the main thing this year. And I think our lives would be better for it, for sure. And today we're going to walk through uh, being a child of God, just that reminding ourselves about who we are. I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm the least handy guy you've literally ever met. I'm not even trying to oversell it. I am the least handy guy you've ever met. I don't know where a screwdriver is in my house. I have no tools and I don't know how to do anything. I'm a total catch of a husband. Um, Like my father-in-law, seriously, he can fix anything. He can do anything. He sees like stuff that's meant for the trash heap and he's gonna like sand it and paint it and kind of like all the stuff I wanna throw out, he's gonna use and make awesome again. He just has this way. My brother-in-law, Derek, he can build anything. He can sing anything. He can play anything. You hate him too. I hate him for that. Like he's like one of the most talented to people I know and it's annoying because he can do everything and I can't do anything. I'm married into a family that can do all this stuff that I can't do. My other brother-in-law, Drew, he's the same way, super creative. He can just fix things. He can imagine things and make them happen. I don't, whatever, when they were handing out stuff in heaven about that, I didn't get in line. I don't know what happened. I don't have any of those abilities or any of those gifts. My friend TD, worship leader here, he can sing anything. He can play anything. He can paint anything. He can write anything. He can create anything. He's just super creative. I, I don't have that thing, whatever he got. Jim, also one of the least handy people that I know, but he can still fix stuff when he's not riding his bike. He can fix surfboards. He can figure all this stuff out. His dad's a mechanic, and I don't know what passed him along the way, but he's got some of that stuff. And then there's me with no, like, do-it-yourself, no DIY skills whatsoever. And so, but what we're walking through today is we got a DIY project about remembering and reclaiming who we are as a much-loved son or daughter of God. Luckily, it has no basis in the skill that you may have to be able to do the work yourself because God has already established us as much loved sons and daughters. So I may not be handy. I may not be DIY material where I can't figure out myself. I can't make myself. You can't figure out yourself. You can't make yourself. But luckily we serve a God who said, I, regardless of your skill, I'm going to establish you as a much loved son or daughter. In fact, Um, What I'm learning is that it's never been more easier to know stuff about ourselves. Do you know that you can Google your name? Don't do it right now. You've probably already done it. I mean, just be honest. You're not going to tell anybody you've done it, but you probably have already done it. And Google didn't exist until 1998. Holy cow. I mean, that's crazy. I was 21 when Google was created. You can go to Ancestry.com. You know you've done it. I have friends that have connected with long lost family. It's it's crazy what's happened. You can do your DNA stuff. You can get the disc profile where you're either a D, I, S, or C, kind of high in all those levels. You can know all the letters. You can be an introvert. You can be intuitive thinking. You can be a feeler. We can, it's never been easier to know more about ourselves. You can take all these personality tests. We can take Myers-Briggs. We can know our four, four letters. I'm an ENTP, in case you're wondering. I know that you were. You can go onto Facebook and figure out what your personality profile, profile is and which you know, office character you're most relied, related to with your personality profile. It's never been easier to know more about yourself. 
You can do strength finder. You can know if you're a relator or if you have woo or where you win others over, your ideation or competition or a developer or a maximizer. You can just know all that stuff about you. And then we're going to drop the Enneagram in and there's nine numbers and you've got a wing and all this stuff. And you can just know more about yourself than you've ever known. You can take the test to know if you're a lion or a golden retriever or an otter or a bee or whatever that thing is. You can do spiritual gifts and the things that God has empowered us if we're much loved sons and daughters. He has gifted us and equipped us. You can know all that stuff about yourself. And still not, we don't know who we are. I mean, we know about us sometimes, but we don't know like who we are foundation. Like we were walking into the party and someone's like, well, I'm, who are you? I'm like, well, I'm Mike Hickerson. Mike Hickerson. What does that mean? Well, because the key questions about ourselves when we're trying to define ourselves, like, are we good at this? Are we not good at this? I'm this number. I'm this number. I'm these letters. I don't know what it is. Like, what makes me, me? Like, what's that foundation that makes me, me? Am I, am I what I accomplish? Like, am I the list of letters behind my name and all the stuff that I've done and attaboys and trophies and something, though, at the end of our life feels like that would be fleeting and not enough to define us, right? What makes me, me? Is it what I've done? Is it like how good I am at something? Is it who I'm in relationship with? Are, are we, am I somebody because I'm married to Jody? Probably. That's, there's part of that that's in that because she's amazing. But some of us define ourselves. We like what makes us us is because of who we're in a relationship with or what we've accomplished or what we've done or the things that we see or like how people perceive us. There's something that just seems not right about all that. What makes us us? We're going to get that fresh ink tattooed on our mind, heart, and soul that God is reminding us that you are a much-loved son or daughter. You are a child of God. And that is the most important thing about you. Everything else pales in comparison to that. Like my grandpa on my dad's side, his name was B.C. Hickerson. Like literally the letters B and C were his name forever. And so like he went all the way through the army, he got all this stuff. And finally, one day there was some government agency that he went to and they wouldn't accept that his name was BC on his birth certificate, BC. They don't stand for anything. It was BC Hickerson. All right. Texarkana, Arkansas, BC Hickerson. That was his name. And so he was in his twenties, late twenties, early thirties, and they made him choose a name for himself. So can you imagine trying to figure out who you are in your 20s and your 30s? You have to define yourself by your name in your 20s and 30s. So he picked Buddy Clyde. I don't know why he picked Buddy Clyde. I don't know if that's the best name ever, but man, I love grandpa. I mean, I love grandpa. You know, so BC is game on for me. I called him BC my whole life or grandpa BC or grandpa Hickerson or whatever you want to say, but he got to pick his name in 20s and 30s. And what we're talking about today in that fresh ink and rewinding is that God has enabled you if you want to accept it to be able to pick your identity wrapped up in him as a much-loved son or daughter. Not like my grandpa that got to pick Buddy Clyde. I don't know why I picked Buddy Clyde, but he did. But God is going, I have made a way for you to accept a whole new identity for yourself that I have bought and paid for. And those letters got me thinking of stuff that defines us. There's BC and there's ENTP and there's all this stuff that we put behind ourselves to find ourselves. Sometimes we get defined by the letters DUI. Sometimes we get defined by the letters MBA or PTSD or PhD or PPG or ADD or ADHD or AWAL or MIA or KIA or MS or MRS or MVP or HOF or double ARP closer than we think, or M-O-M, or D-A-D, or H-I-V, or G-E-D, or A-A, or N-A, or M-D, or D-D-S, or N-R-A, or C-P-A, or C-E-O, or C-F-O. I can keep going down the things that we have these things that we let define us, but God is going, I've got a whole new ink that I want to put on you. I want to remind you that you are a much-loved son or daughter, even when you don't feel like it, if you've accepted me. And none of those letters are bad. It's not all bad stuff. But it's not the primary stuff that God wants to remind us of what he's defined us as. Because none of those letters and none of those things are strong enough to carry the weight of a human soul when it matters the most. All the stuff you've done, not strong enough to carry the weight of a human life, soul, mind. 
all the stuff you've accomplished, not strong enough, all the, the, how you've defined yourself, but who you're in relationship or with proximity to is not strong enough to carry a soul or carry a life when life matters most. Is never meant to. Because it is possible. Maybe let me ask it this way. Is it possible that we've let some of the wrong things sneak into our mind, heart, and soul and define us? Because it has never been easier to know about ourselves and it's never been harder or more difficult to believe that that who we are, who God tells us that we are, to believe him. It's never been harder to recover that. It's never been harder to base our lives on that. I mean, it's never been more difficult because everyone wants to tell us all about ourselves and how great we are, but we have shut out or we've been too busy to hear God, that still small voice that reminds us and calls us back to those healthy places to say, no, no, you are not what you do. You are not who you're in relationship with. Those aren't bad things. You are not the letters behind our name. Who you are, Mike, foundationally, is a much-loved son or daughter of God. You are a child of God, Mike. What could anyone do to you? What else do you need from anyone else? Man, if we were to get our minds and hearts and souls around that one fact this year, to get that imprinted, that that is who I am, it would change everything. And Jesus talked a ton about this. In fact, one of the sneaky ways that we're going to go about it is we're going to go back into this um, uh, context where they were trying to trap Jesus about what the most important laws were. And there's a, like 580-something mosaic laws, and people are trying to trap him and be fancy with them. And Jesus just cuts right to it, and he, and he leads it out this way. And so hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees and Pharisees, these were like basically um, like religious elites that believed a little bit different, but they both thought that they were elite and that they knew all the answers about God and everyone else that wasn't a Sadducee or Pharisee was an idiot and they couldn't get connected to God because God really liked them and didn't like anybody else. I know that wouldn't happen today. That probably blows your mind that people live like that, but that's what was going on. So they got together and one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question, tested Jesus. I love that because we're arrogant enough to think like, well, I'm probably smarter than God, so I'm going to trap him. And like, he's not going to be able to answer this. And then I realize I do that all the time as well. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment? And apparently Jesus is bad at math because we talked about this already. He asked for the greatest commandment and Jesus sneakily gives him three. So Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. It's the most important thing you can do is leverage the trajectory of your life, that God is who he says he is and that you love him, that you are so like enamored with what he's done for you. You're so grateful for what he's done with you. You like leverage your life to be in relationship and in gratitude, not to get the, the rescue, but because we've been rescued as much love sons and daughters, we like maybe when our life isn't working out, it's because we've not had God in his primary place. That's what happens with me. That's free. I don't know if that's what happens with you. If life isn't working out like you planned, if there's stuff going on, not all the time, but most of the time for me, it's because I'm missing this one, like getting God in his primary spot in my life. And then Jesus goes, because he's bad at math, apparently, he asks for one commandment, and Jesus gives him another. And the second one is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And this is literally, love your neighbor was week two of this series. It's all we talked about. Try to be the kind of people that love our neighbor. But the sneaky part, as yourself. So we're supposed to love ourselves too, or view ourselves how God views us. And so if we can't view ourselves how God views us, and if we don't have the love that God has for us, and we don't view ourselves that way, then apparently, according to Jesus, not my words, is it's going to be really hard to love our neighbor the way that he's called us to if we don't know who we are or how we're supposed to view ourselves or how God views us. And then Jesus goes, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. All the fat part, fat front part of your Bible, like all of it hangs on these commandments right here. And I love that. I love what Jesus is going through. And so there's two commandments that inform our three most important relationships. We already talked about it. God, we want to love God, get to him in the primary spot in our life. We want to love people. We want to love others. We want to make sure, because that's what God has called us to. But that sneaky little part where Jesus comes into some identity on who you are, and it escaped me for the longest time. We also have, the, have, to, have to have the right relationship with ourselves. Like if we don't know, and I'm not talking about self-help and that you're good enough and you're smart enough and doggone it, people like you and love yourself and self-care and all, you know, there's 
aspects of that, but it's like, it, no, what I'm talking about is like, I got to realize who God says I am. And I've got to have an accurate view of myself and what he's called me to and what he's established me as, as a much loved son of God before I can ever be able to love others the way that God has loved me. And that's hard. It's difficult. Did you know that you spend more time with yourself than any other human being alive, even in COVID? You spend more time with yourself. How's that working for you? I mean, you find yourself talking to yourself. Did you know that you listen to yourself more than anyone else? That you talk to yourself, and if you're talking out loud to yourself, there's some other conversations that we can have about that. It probably needs to stop, but that's all right. Did you know that you talk to yourself more than any other human talks to you? Even if you have a talkative spouse. Did you know that whatever you believe about yourself, mostly, not completely, but mostly is what you've told yourself to believe about yourself? However good or bad you think you are, mostly, not completely, is what you've told yourself about how good or bad you think you are. How worthy you feel, mostly, not completely, is about how worthy you've told yourself that you deserve. I'm not talking about self-help. What I'm talking about is the fact that when we realize that God sent his best from heaven to rescue us, to establish us and give us the right, man, that is a massive thing for our souls. We gotta realize who we are because God knows who you are. The enemy knows your rightful identity already. That's why he's after you. The enemy of your soul is after you. Creation, it says biblically, knows who you are. The only people that don't seem to know who we are or forget who we are is us. When we don't realize that we've got to get this ink back in our hearts, minds, and souls, that we are a much loved child of God, period, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, whatever it is, nothing else gets to define us. He understands, Jesus understands and he's rescued and saved. He relentlessly pursued us when we were at our worst, not because of what we've done. He moved towards us. God sent his best so that you could have the right, so that I could have the right to be established as a son or daughter of God. Second thing that God did, he did not give us what we deserve. He gave us what we could never get. He moves towards us with grace, love, and freedom and identity setting as a much-loved son or daughter. Third, he didn't like meet us halfway. If you come my way, then I'll come your way. It was like, you know, you know those people that you're gonna meet for lunch and you're like, can we just meet halfway because it's a long drive? God, God didn't ask any of that when he was reestablishing you as a son or daughter of God. He came all the way into the mess and he will come all the way into our current mess to remind us and scream throughout eternity, you are a much-loved son or daughter of God. Live a life worthy of that calling that you've received. I came all the way towards you. It's not based on you. It's based on his movement to us. So how, did God, how does God see me? I'm like, am I, am I making this up? No, this is... This is exactly the way that Jesus talked about it, exactly the way that God has been talking about it. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called, hello, children of God. And that is what we are. I don't, know, I don't feel like it all the time. It doesn't matter how you feel about this. If, if you've been rescued, that is what you are. All right, you don't believe that verse. Let's just try another one because it's all over the New Testament. Yet, all, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, Jesus' name, he gave the right to become, hello, children of God. I love this part right here. Receive and believe equals the right to become. I don't know your story, I don't know your trajectory. I don't know what we need to be reminded of today. I know that I need this reminder all the time to those who have received and believed means I got rights coming to me from God that I can become a child of God. If I've received because I believe and added that, I get rights with God, the creator of the universe, move towards me 
and establish me as a much-loved son or daughter of his. Maybe I just want to walk over here to the mirror because I don't always feel this way when I'm like looking in the mirror. You know, it's like Stuart's, you know, I'm like, you're good enough, you're smart enough. That's not what we're talking about when we're reminding ourselves who we are. What we're reminding ourselves who we are is that every day I need to be reminded, 1 John 3, 1, I'm a child of God. That is who I am. I need to be reminded of John, you know, 1, 12, like to those who receive and believe, he gave the right to become a child of God. That is who I am. I need to be reminded of that. When I look into the mirror, it's not based on how I feel or what the wrinkles are or what's going on in my face that day or what's going on in my hair that day. It, that has nothing to do with the basis of anything. Who I am, what I've accomplished, all the stuff behind me, all the letters that are behind my name, all the things that I'm doing, who I'm in relationship with, that is not enough to define me as the most important thing. The most important thing that defines me is I am a child of God. Who are you? I'm a child of God because I've been rescued. And I need to remember that because I've been called to a life like that. And what that means, what I have the right to be, if I'm a child of God, it means I am accepted. God saw my rebellion. He saw our rebellion and said, you know what? I'm going to cancel that rebellion and I'm going to accept you as a much loved son or daughter. It means that I am secure. It's not like God's up there. I don't need to like be like a junior high girl. Like he loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. Oh, I don't want, I kind of sped on the way here today. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. His God's not fickle like that. He's not changing his mind. He has set eternity in motion to rescue and save us. We can be secure in that love. The most secure love that you will ever know. You can be accepted, you can be secure, and you can be significant. Because the creator of the universe who spoke the universe into existence said, that's my boy, that's my girl. I've called you. You have the right to be a son of God. You are ex accepted and secure and significant. And if you need letters to define your name, you could probably find some letters in here. I won't point them out to you because I would, anyway. So if you need other letters to define you, but I, I just don't want you to take my word for it. This is all over the Bible. Let me, let me just read this because what I think about humility is that humility is agreeing with God about who I am. So when I'm humble, when I'm going, okay, God, I don't think too highly of myself, but I want to agree with you about who I am. And when I can agree with this, that means that I'm in a humble place. And pride is not agreeing with God about who we are. So if I don't agree with this, or I don't feel like this, or I don't live this out, or if I'm like think too highly of myself, or I think too lowly of myself, there's a form of pride in that because that is not agreeing with God about who I am. And God says, you are a much loved son of God. Live free that way. I just want to read off a couple things because in Christ I'm accepted and secure and significant. And what I want to say is like, because I am in Christ and Christ is in me, I am a child of God that is completely accepted. I'm just going to run through this. I am God's child. I am Christ's friend. I have been justified. I am united with the Lord. I am in one spirit with him. I have been bought with a price. I belong to God. I'm a member of Christ's body, the church. I've been adopted as God's child. I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit. I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins, and I am complete in Christ. I mean, starting 2021 with like, I am a much-loved son of God that is accepted, is free. But that's not it. Because I am in Christ and Christ is in me, I am a child of God that is totally secure. I am free forever from condemnation. I am assured that God works all things together for the good. I cannot be separated from the love of God. I have been established and anointed and sealed by God. I am confident that God will finish the good work that he started in me. I am a citizen of heaven. I am hidden with Christ. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of self-discipline. I can find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. I am secure. Deeply. But that's not all. I'm accepted, I'm secure, but I'm significant because I am in Christ and Christ is in me. I'm a child of God that is deeply significant. I'm the salt of the earth and the light of the world. 
I'm a branch of the true vine, Jesus. I've been chosen to bear fruit. I'm a personal, spirit-empowered witness of Christ and what he's done in me. I'm a temple of God. I'm a minister of reconciliation for God. I am God's co-worker. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. I am God's workmanship created for good works. I may approach God with freedom and confidence. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That is who I am. Of all the stuff that could define me, nothing is strong enough other than the rescue that we've received by God to be established as much-loved sons and daughters. And I want this so bad for us. Though no matter what the circumstances, no matter what's going on, that we could be reminded this year to get on track that I am a child of God, And the thing that matters most with me is that I am accepted and secure and significant to the God of the universe. And I want this for you. And it's available to those who receive and believe you get the right to become. Not based on your effort, but based on what God has done through Jesus. Why don't you pray with me? God, it's overwhelming to me to process through all the ways that I let so much other things have a shot at defining me or making me feel worthy or good or whatever. And I just blow by the fact that I am in relationship with the God of the universe And he moved towards me to rescue and save and establish me. God, it blows me away, literally. Would you help us all return to that truth to define us as the most important thing about us on a daily basis and live out of that free place to be the kids that you've called us to be? It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
That is my prayer for all of us this week, that we would trust a known God uh, with our heart, that we would allow him to speak what is true about who we are, that you would be reminded every day this week of the truth and the message that we just heard, that we are accepted, secure, and significant because of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. So I want to remind you this week of a couple of things. Make sure uh, if you haven't downloaded the app, you can uh, do that to stay connected and take next steps. You can also follow social media to see all the things that are happening around mission. And then don't forget, next weekend, we're kicking off a new series called Better For It. And if online is your preferred way to engage with mission, I want to encourage you to invite people in your world to attend online with you. In fact, we'll put in the chat a real easy link that you can click to extend an invitation to someone in your world right now who needs a message of hope and an invitation from you. So make sure you copy that and think of ways to invite people in your world to check out Mission next week as we kick off this new series.